Hi, this is Care Hart, Chairman of the Board for the Disabled Artists Foundation. And yes, this is very, very late for sending out the March Happy Pack. Wanted to let you all know, those of you who are receiving the Happy Packs, that I am not the greatest crafter. So you're not here to see someone magically transform some paper project or painting project or anything like that ever when my fingers are up on the screen. Um, but essentially, I'm a crafter who likes to play just like you. And crafting is what helps me personally get through some of the pain myself that I deal with on a daily basis. So to be a crafter or an artist doesn't mean you have to have magical output. It means that you are doing this during the process to help you get through whatever it is you're getting through. Now, let me share with you what's in the March Happy Pack. You're going to receive two glue sticks, or most of you are going to receive two glue sticks. Um, this little box that actually looks like a matchbook, I mean, a matchbox, but inside it's not matches. It's a push pen, um, a, oh, it's hard for you to see that, isn't it? Take out the push pen. It's a little teeny tag that fits perfectly in your matchbox. And this is a project all in itself, but the push pen is just to keep the push pen safe from poking through your plastic. You're going to receive several sheets of paper in boho style. And then on the back side, you're getting information on embroidery stitching. So let me open this package. I will mute while I take the noisy part. Okay, so yes, it will look the same for every, oh, look at this, this is the one that doesn't have the pushpin. I knew I had this one pulled aside for a reason. This is the one with the pushpin. Okay, so then you have these pieces and the glue sticks keep you from having so many bubbles on your paper, but you can choose to use wet glue if you want to when you're crafting, depends on what you're making. So let me flip through what the pages are. These were generously donated by Misty, Mac Jewelry Shop. These will be one-sided prints on 20 pound paper. And the reason we use 20 pound paper is because a lot of these are meant for collage. And you can layer these items and create with these items. You can see up close, there's a lot of detail on these pages. And there's many different color schemes to work with. It depends on what your choice is in here. So those were all for Misty. Obviously something print funny right there. So then you have um, some tea cards that Misty made. We printed these on cardstock. And we thought that what you might want to do is turn these into a project all themselves. Um, and so you can, and, and I will do this with you today. I've given each person a blank piece of cardstock. And my thought on that with this blank piece of cardstock is that you can make this into a project all yourself um, or I want to teach you guys how to do a pamphlet stitch, make a little book based on some of the papers you have in here and you can make it into a journal. About 80% of you have, because I ran out of, um, these boards. These are canvas boards. I have some on order, so everyone who gets a happy pack next month uh, will have one of these. And these canvas boards, well, I think it's about 90% of you have one. These, these canvas boards are not backed. If you want to hang them, there's some stuff that um, we can start to include if you want that you can glue onto the back of the board. But I just haven't included that because I don't know how you want to use them, right? And so those are rather inexpensive at like an Ace Hardware or something like that. So it wouldn't preclude you from having a few cents if you want to hang it. And there's a lot of different ways you could choose to hang it once you create your art. But this is... Um, a canvas board that you can paint. And in this case, um, today, my sample 
because I ran out and I didn't want to give anyone something and um, keep anything for myself, uh, my sample is the same size, just so you know, but it doesn't have the canvas on it. It's just a hardboard, just like this is hardboard. Um, so when I work on this one today, um, it won't look the same, but yours will look like this. Now, I'm not going to do tutorials for this today. Um, because there's already written instructions that were generously donated by Christine LeBron Titus. Um, even though down at the bottom it says personal use only, all rights reserved, we contacted her and she said we she would love if we printed these for all of our artists. Um, and so here, this is page one and it's the basic stitch. You have the running stitch, the back stitch, the blanket stitch, and the stem stitch, and you can practice those. Everyone receives all kinds of products that are in here. I don't have the list upstairs. These were packaged by Susie Bratu. Thank you, Susie. All the printables here were printed by Laura, one-legged witchy woman. So thank you for that. And so it's a whole group effort. And then Jean Peter is the one that got a hold of the lady and got permission for us to have these ones. This is the chain stitch, the feather stitch, the straight stitch, the detached chain stitch and the French knot. And you'll notice that these are actually boxed like this because you're able to fold them and create little mini bookslets with these if you want to. Page three, there's more stitches here. You have the star eyelet stitch, one that's gonna be fun for you to practice. The fern stitch, the wheat ear stitch, I'll put the link after this video is done to her download. I'll see if I can find that link for you. Um, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't even read what that says. Uh, the herringbone stitch and the closed blanket stitch. Look at that closed blanket stitch. I think that's cool too. Then there's another page on stitching. And yes, it shows you some of the same, but you can make this into a book. You just cut the line in the middle that's dashed. And then it's the running stitch, the back stitch, the blanket stitch, the stem stitch, the chain stitch, the feather stitch, which is very cool. And then it shows you how to make the book into a booklet, which is another thing that you can, you can do. And we're gonna use something like that today, I think, in our craft. So you have the straight stitch, the French knot, the split stitch, and again, the chain stitch. Um, this is also a printable where it's two-sided. So here you have um, the blanket stitch again, but you can actually have this turned into a book if you wish. Or you can leave it flat like we're leaving it flat satin stitch, back stitch, stem stitch, fly stitch, and oh my gosh, isn't the fly stitch fabulous? I know, Sherry. And that's the end of all the stitches. Inside of this pack, let me just take this pack out and show you what comes in here so you guys can see what kind of play is at stake, right? So you have the fibers for you to stitch with. I mean, the, the yarn for you to stitch with. Hey, what is that called, yarn? Thread, thread. Then everyone's going to have different scraps. And that's because it is fun to play. Like, look at this. You see the house, maybe that house inspires you to cut your fabric scraps to sew it into a house, right? Um, and so you have all kinds of fabric scraps, different pieces of different things, matching and non-matching to inspire you to stretch. And once you get the hang of this, maybe instead of recycling that old shirt that, or tossing it in the trash because it's too stained to donate, maybe you can upcycle some of your clothing. And by the way, wouldn't it be great if you stitched some of these things on, these various fibers of many different lengths? And it's just truly a pile of fabulous fun fibers in there. And everybody's again will be a little different. And I'll just show you just one sample pack in here. This one will be fun to practice some stitching on because you can actually see um, the holes and target where they come in and out of. And you can see a lot can fit into these packages. 
And the goal in these packages was just to bring your mind into play, to start thinking about what you create. And then the reason there's so many different kinds is you can practice your stitches on each one of these. And let's say on this one, this lovely circus fabric, maybe you wanna outline your tiger with a running stitch. Guys, that's a lion, I'm sorry. Maybe you wanna outline your lion with a running stitch. Or this leaf, you wanna run your stitches and create that vein that you see in the leaf. You know, the fun is getting your brain and your mind outside of whatever your everyday challenge is that you're working through. Crafting is like a meditation. You can look at that. There's an element to it that sets you free. There's no expectations you should be setting on yourself. You don't have to have everything perfect. You just have to play. Remind yourself of how fun and freeing it was to play when you were much younger. Every person that receives a happy pack is an adult. But being an adult doesn't mean we're never allowed to play. And that is exactly what crafting is. Well, look, this. there's even an octagon here. Look at this. You could stitch this octagon using one of your practice stitches into something like that. In fact, don't be afraid to layer your fabrics and create new things with them. Or cut your fabrics to different sizes and using all the leftover pieces to make something. So I'm gonna put all of these back. Trying delicately to put them all back. <laughs> that's, not, that's not working very well. All right, here we go. Inside of here is where you will find your needle. And isn't Susie adorable in how she put the needle in here? And somebody actually is getting this sample pack. That's why I'm trying to be delicate. But I did rip your um, washi tape a little bit, but it still sticks. So here's your two needles. You have a binder ring and four buttons. This is a yo-yo. And for those of you who have never seen a yo-yo, you can even start your first stitch, turning your yo-yo into a flower. And that is all good. I might add a larger needle in some of these. And in everyone's kits, except for this one, there's um, the story that was in the magazine about the foundation. And so they can use that to get a hold of us if they want to. www.disabledartist.org. Now, you already saw this. We're done with the stitches. I'm going to put this all back after this video, not right now, because it's just too darn noisy. So hold up. Okay, so you have your two glue sticks. Get out your matchbox, and I'm going to do my canvas last, and I'll show you why in a little bit, because I want to show you first, oh, it is in this one. Yeah, so everyone gets one of these, and it tells you who we are, and then it has a link down at the bottom um, to our website, um, and that's what was included. We included that one time for every one of the hardest and people in the Happy Pack program. 
one time for each with approval from the magazine owner to reproduce it and approval from the, the writer who actually is the one who created the PDF for us. So my thought on these is it really feels the way that she put it together that some of these pages can be book pages, right? So turn these, see how there's like a line down the middle? Save this one aside and this one aside. So I'm going to turn these four pages into a book, I think and show you guys how to do a pamphlet stitch. And because I want the book to be a little sturdier, well, no, actually, I think I'm gonna do it this way. So here, which one do I want to be on the cover? I think I want her on the cover. So you can see that there's a little bit of white on the top and on the bottom. If you don't have scissors, oh my gosh, do I not have scissors on my desk? Oh, that's funny. I always had scissors in different rooms. All right, I'll have to use these ones today. If you don't have scissors, send me an email. My email, I will leave chat up, is help at disabledartists.org, and I will drop off scissors to you. All right, so some people will stress about not being able to make a straight line. I'm actually thinking of doing it differently. So get ready for this. So first I cut off the white part. Now I'm just gonna wobble it. And all I'm doing on these first few pages is wobbling. And I don't wanna lose her hair, so I make sure I'll wobble around her hair there. So I created a wobbly edge. And it's good that I don't have my glasses on because some people are sight challenged. And I'm going to craft in real time with you guys today. So again, you don't have to worry about a straight line. We're just gonna wobble it. These are beautiful pages to work with, generously donated by an individual who is differently abled herself. And she is just a fabulous woman to work with. And if anyone knows of a digital artist who wants to volunteer and donate stuff to the foundation, that would be fabulous as well. If you want to purchase this particular set, I'll have to get a link from Misty and put it in here later. Um, if you're someone who's not a disabled artist and watching this and thinks, oh my gosh, I love the way that she layered these pages. And some of you are probably saying, well, why do you even cut off the white line first? Well, that's because I feel like it. You can choose to do it this way if you want and just stay below the white line when you're doing your trimming. That's fine too. Now, because the backside is, is white, um, you can actually create art on the backside or journal pages on the backside, however you want. You can glue the pages together if you want and make the pages a little more sturdy. I did ponder that for just a second. But when I create, I just go. I don't have a plan right now on what I'm gonna be doing. And that's okay. You don't always have to have a plan. Sometimes it's fun to just go play. Thank you. 
You know what I think I'm going to do is I think I will add a project next month with some washi tape and introduce many of you who may have never used washi tape before to what that is. And for those of you who don't know, we actually have two programs on the foundation. Um, if people are connected to us through an organization, um, like Meals on Wheels or Lark or a secret one that exists up north that we mail to that's in the Happy Pack program, um, anyone who exists in those programs that connected to us this way, they receive the same Happy Packs. And then in those groups, they can create them together, they can create them separately, and all the packages are the same. Same. The hardest bags, the packages are pretty much different for everyone. No one receives the same thing in the hardest program. In the hardest program, the the bags that they receive are all mailed to them. None of them are local, local to me, I mean. And we have hardists and happy packers all over the nation. We are in 36 states now, isn't that crazy? Where we have, where, where we have hardists in our program. And I call happy packers and hardest bags hardists. I wanted to keep his shoe, did you see that? Okay, we have all of these done. Now, something that you might not even think about is that if you wanted to create a folder where they're all pockets, I have room to do that. I definitely have room to do that. Let me show you, we will just do that right now. So I'm going to just fold up a little bit each one of these and make it a pocket. And then I'm going to show you another little secret after I fold it up. And see, I told you I just wing it. I know, right? Did someone say boho? Oh, I can see a little bit of the feet, but I think it's still okay. So I'm going to turn these all into little pockets. Oh my gosh, wouldn't this be cute if we made a pocket book? and turned all our tea cards into tags. So Christy's one of the design team members for the Happy Pack packages. But as you can tell, this is the March Happy Pack package <laughs> and um, it's going out tomorrow. So um, yeah, it's a little late this month for me to even get it to the the folks in time. But then again, it's probably good for me personally to go play every once in a while because frankly, I just need to play every once in a while. Okay. So now I folded the bottom up to these four pages. Okay. And you're going to say, well, that's not a pocket. Well, it's not yet. It will be. Get ready. I'm going to show you. So now it's going to be a page and I am just going to find what feels like the center. Doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. I do want the bottom to feel perfect. I don't care about the sides or the top. Hold it here. I'm focusing on the bottom, and then I'm going to come up from the bottom. Make the bottom perfect. And here's another one. Now, you're going to say to yourself sometimes, oh my gosh, I don't know how I feel about this white space. Well, then doodle the crap out of it. Go play with it. That's fine. And this is our fourth one. Now, when you buy a folder, you know, you go back to when you were in school or maybe you're using folders now for different projects and there are pocket fold. Oh my gosh, this one doesn't want to fold for me. Fold your britches. It's not listening. Oh, there we go. See, maybe that's why I craft, is I can control the paper around me. <laughs> the only thing in my control. Uh, there we go. These boho ladies. 
So now I have these boho ladies. They're ready. They fit in here. We're going to make this into a book. But then I ask myself, do I really want it to be? Oh, I kind of like it. Pocket lady. Pocket lady. Pocket. No, let's do it this way. Let's do it pocket, pocket, so it's not all the same. You can turn it around. It's fine. Because I want the inside to look like this. So now that's done. Now, if you're really feeling it and you're saying to yourself, oh my gosh, I cannot handle the edges like this. Well, then don't put up with the edges like that. Just go like this. Cut them all the same. Would I normally do that? Yeah, probably not. But I'm doing it for you guys. You probably can't do many more than four pages. It's going to get pretty tight when I get down to the pocket part. And I'm going to try to snip the pocket one straight. Goodness knows I can't do anything straight, so it's going to be a little cockeyed, but that's fine. And I have all these scraps. I know, right? Writing space behind your little pockets. Doodling around the edges. I'm loving that. And it's how many pages? It's only three. Why was I thinking it was four pages? Oh, it is four pages. There's the fourth one. So it's kind of cute next to each other. You wouldn't even know that it's two pockets right there. So I have to doodle that edge too. Yeah. Okay. Now before you stitch them in, which I'm going to show you guys how to stitch, this one won't need it. You don't need to do it on the one that's folded the opposite way where the pocket is like the front cover. You don't need to stitch this. It'll be fine. I mean to cut this, but on this one where it's on the inside, we're going to remove the bulk. Okay. So open it back up and I'm going to do this for you three times and you'll see it. Okay. So this is your pocket. You're going to open it back up and just fold it back in half again. And this is where your line is. You're going to trim it up to your fold line. Okay. It doesn't matter if you cut into it a little bit. This is what it looks like. What does that do? I love the picture of the girl with the, the guitar. But this gets rid of the bulk when it's folded in your book. Okay. Now this project could have been done with thicker paper and you can make your thicker your paper thicker if you want to by gluing it to other paper like your junk mail, your magazine pages, whatever it is you want to glue it to, or maybe even the other paper that's included, which we're about to use. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this paper into strips. Oh, wait, wait, I was going to do this for you three times first. So let's do that first. So take it, fold it in half, not on the side that opens, but on the closed side. Trim it up to the corner. That's done. Same here. Trim it up to the corner. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. Are you ready for this? Right here. If I was to glue it right here and right here, I'd lose some pocket space and I don't want to lose any pocket space because it's already kind of small. So what I'm going to do is create little strips. And so first, let me trim off the white space here. And yes, for those of you who need to measure, go measure. I don't measure. That's why you'll probably very rarely ever see a tutorial for me. What you'll see is just um, inspiration videos, which are guidance. Okay. What is this paper going to be for me, you're asking? 
it's going to fold around the corners for me like this. And it's going to close my pocket. Okay, so I need the paper to be about this long. I need it several times, which is fine. If I make it a little bit too long, I'm not going to worry about that either. Now, obviously, I don't need it this long. And I have two ends for every page. All, all of the pages, including these ones that I want to close off. Okay. So that means if I need two for every page and I have four pages, then I'm just, this is two pages. This is four pages. And this is eight pages. I'm just doubling it. This works out that it's the right size for me. Now, for those of you like me that doesn't like it square, what I like to do is one at a time. I will fold it in half. And I will cut. Okay, so here's my fold. I'm folding it in half and I will cut from the fold to the open side inwards. And it doesn't have to match. You just flip it over and do it on the other side. So when you open it, don't worry, you're going to have lots of scraps to practice with. When you open it, it looks like this. When you close it, you cut from the fold to the open part. Okay. What does this do for you? It gives you a closure, which looks really cute, on the edge of all your pockets. So let's go ahead and do our assembly line. We're going to fold them all because we don't want it to look exactly the same on any one. Now, if you have washi tape, you can actually do this with washi tape too if you want, but it's not as durable as if you do it with paper. My favorite thing to do it with, if any of you have seen my videos on things like this and other on my um, channel when I used to craft on my own channel, um, I prefer to do it with hanging folders because those things are durable and they're pretty, and they have this great green color to them. And you don't have to worry about it lining up here because you won't see it on both sides. See, if it doesn't line up here, it won't matter. For some of you who want to ink the edges, this is one of those things where inking the edges looks good. That's fine. So then ink the edges. Oh my gosh, how perfect that little flower is. If you're like, I can't fold a straight line, this is the craft for you because it doesn't matter if your line is straight or not. It'll still look good when you're done. Oh, look, that one's a little wonky, but we're not going to worry about it. So it's not perfectly even, but it's fine. All right, so let's take this trash, set this baby off to the side. And we are going to glue them down. Now, I just have a piece of scrap right here I'm going to use. To do my glue in. Um, most of you will be getting this one, the washable glue stick with the purple. Um, I like the purple on video because you can see where I've glued. But I'm open to all kinds of glue sticks. 
And if any company ever wanted to donate glue sticks to the foundation, oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, man, wouldn't that be cool? I mean, could you imagine the day when Elmer's actually gave us those two glue sticks per, per person? Oh, my gosh, wouldn't that be heaven? I, mean, I feel like they're getting free advertising with us all the time. And don't just put a tiny bit of glue on your paper. Don't just lick it. Stick it. Good morning, Jean. Okay. So now you've created your first two pockets. This is the outer pocket, and you can put whatever you want in your tiny little pockets right there. That's the first set. Now let's get to the rest of them. Sometimes I'll put my glue on this way. Not that I have like a plan or anything. It just feels cleaner. So now I'm going to do that. Problem is, is I'm so darn forgetful. I do have to look at the back and make sure I have it on all the spots. And you notice I'm not caring which order I pick those up in. They don't have to match. In fact, I actually like it better when there's a little bit of a color variance between this edge and the paper that I'm putting it on versus blending in. Because to me, it lets you know even that was created there. Oh, for goodness sakes. A lot of the artists also received this paper. If not, they received the Bright Boho kit, but they can do some of the same projects with that. And if you say, oh my gosh, I see a line, who cares? Go doodle on it. For goodness sakes, take a pen of any color and just color in your line. Put some color wherever you want. This page, I just feel like doing this right now, so that's what I'm going to do. And yes, I literally just scribble sometimes. That's what I do because it's my playtime. So what do I want to be blue here? I think what I would really like to be blue on her is her scarf. I'm just gonna color in her scarf real quick. And that's the only thing I see. Now, one of the things that's kind of nice on coloring on papers like this, you can do this with your colored pencils or whatever it is you wanna do, is that the shading is done for you. So if you colored this in with your colored pencils and the shading is all done for you on whatever you're accenting, then it comes out gorgeous like that. Don't be afraid to do that. And if you're really going, oh my gosh, I don't like how this flips out, then go ahead and put another piece of paper on the inside and stiffen it up and glue the two pieces of paper together. Like I said, junk mail is fabulous with that. Lined paper from notebooks, that's fabulous with that too. Okay, we have these two pockets done. So we're halfway done with that part. Now we'll do these ones. Oh my gosh, do you see that big honk of glue I left? Oh, the numbers are upside down. That's going to bug me. <laughs> we all have our issues. Oh, that's one of mine. You get a little glue on your paper, it's fine. Push it off. It'll be fine. It's just play, remember? When you were a kid, did you really care? Who won in hide and go seek? No, you were just out there playing and having fun. Okay, maybe some of you did. Some of you, I bet you have that competitive spirit of like, I gotta win. I gotta win this game. 
I was pretty competitive when it came to tag your it. Oh my gosh, I'll get a little carried away. I still do that to some people. I'll actually send them a, a message on Facebook and all I'll say on Facebook is tag with some of those gifts, you know, those little movie things where it's got like the guy that pokes and says tag and then bam, walks off. And that's the only message I send them all day long. <laughs> yep, I do that. I am that silly little kid and I will always be a silly little kid and that's okay. And I know I've said this before, but some, you know, when my, all my kids were grown, oh my gosh, I'm really making a mess out of this. When all my kids were grown, um, when my youngest one was talking about adulting. Like I didn't even know that word existed until after my kids were grown. And, oh, look at this. I got to show you something real quick. Let's finish my story in a second. Do you see how sometimes this part is a little wider? Don't be afraid of that. If it goes really high, all you got to do is just take your scissors and snip. Like imagine if it came all the way this high, you just snip right there and it'll be fine. Everything will fit in and it'll stay glued up here. Don't worry about it. And if that didn't make sense, don't worry about that either. You'll figure it out the first time you try it. Okay, so here's the story. So all my kids were adulting. So as soon as all my kids were adulting, I said, well, does that mean I'm childing? And childing didn't quite work. And I like to call my kids kids, not child. And so I say, does that mean I'm kidding? <laughs> so my kids, <laughs> they're used to me and my ridiculous puns, but that one was just like, mom. <laughs> So yeah, as soon as all my kids started adulting, I started kidding. So well, that's it. I'm done with the adulting part. All right, here we go. A piece of me really wants to put corners in all these pages. I don't remember what order I had it in, but I do know that the one that faces inward is my top one. Okay. So now we're going to stitch these in, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is bugging me. So, nope, we're not going to stitch it in yet. Let me show you a little trick. So I have eight corners that I'm going to tinker with right now, which means I'm going to use these same eight pages. And you don't have to use this paper to make your corners. You can use whatever paper you want to make. Like I said, it would be great if you did it with fabric fits or whatever. And I don't know why I'm cutting it because I really like the torn look better. See, if you always get all the supplies you always ever want, you never have to figure out how to do things differently. And so I think one of the advantages some of us have that have had times when things were tighter and expenses made things difficult. I have two. I need to figure out how to make this eight. This will be four. I can only do four of these. Maybe. I think I could possibly do the corners this way. All right, so here's the plan. You take your paper, you cut it however I just cut it, and then you're like this. I folded it, and then I tore one edge, okay? So then I'm going to lay it like this, and then I'm going to fold these in here and these in here because I want eight 
we all know that double one is two and double two is four and double four is eight. Oh, you didn't know you were going to have to do math. Now I'm going to have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like this. It'll make sense in a minute. Don't worry about it. Okay. I'm just a ripping. It'll be fine. Okay, for those of you. I know it's a devil crony. <laughs> it's a knee slapper. Oh, oh, look at this. We're getting closer. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Here's what I want out of this. It'll totally make sense to you in a minute. Don't worry about it. Now I want to see how it looks when I put it up here. This is going to be my corner stiffener. And I want to make sure that I have this corner and this corner tied out. Let me get something scrappy. Do I even have anything scrappy big enough today? Let me get a magazine page. Yes, I sit on one of those little ball chairs because I sit too much. So hold on one second. I'm getting a scrap page. Okay, I'm probably never going to use this page, so we'll use this one. You could have used these kinds of things, too, for your corners. Okay, here and here. For those of you who want to miter the corners, you can do the whole fold over thing. I don't really care for that, but you can. You know what I mean? So like this. I just don't think that looks good. Not on this. Not. I mean, it looks good on some things, just not on this. So what I'm going to try to do is just glue up this sheet right here. And not too much extra. I'm trying to see how much of the corner I can get away with. So all of this. I'm noodling, guys. I'm noodling. This is what my noodling looks like. Okay. This is my ripped side. And I'm just strengthening the corners. This is why I needed scrap paper. Then I'm going to cut it around to match my page. You guys are going to say, well, you already cut your page. Well, that's okay. When I cut my page, I didn't anticipate this. It's all fine. For those of you who use inky stuff, you can ink the edges too, and you won't have to think about it. But look, that page is no longer going to flip as much because it's twice as thick. So it goes from 20 pound paper to 40 pound paper. Bam! We just doubled it. And it looks cute on the corner. All right, done. Next side. This one is going to be like that.
Oh, it's for March. These are hardest kits for March. Um, and I can give a free link to the, the um, I don't even have it beside me now, the stitch kit part. And the digitals, I'll put a link down here as well on where those digitals can come from. Okay. Oh, that's cute. Next. Why do I lay it on the paper? I guess my answer to you guys is I only just lay it there to kind of get a feel for how far my point goes in. I used to glue everything on a glass chessboard and let it fully dry and then clean that chessboard. I could miter the corner and then glue that folded part down too. That does make sense. My only concern is, is because I didn't do a square corner, it might be a hassle on the cutting part and then I'd have two cut edges on the corner. Oh, I know these digitals are fabulous. And it's so generous of Misty to open and give us so many digitals. I mean, and I don't know if you guys know this, but Junk with Steph shares 10 pages every single month for packages. And so all the hardest packs received either Junk with Steph or the Misty Digitals this month. And we're going to start a new program. Shh. This is kind of cool. Been talking about it with Laura, who prints all of the digitals for the hardests. Um, oops, it's a little off. We'll make it work. Come back and fix it. And we're going to create a page on the website where we can give hardest the choice of what digital they want printed, but they'll have to say it several weeks in advance. That way, any new artists who've never seen some of the digitals we've given away will be like, ooh, I want that. Why is that blue right there? That's kind of weird. I must have picked it up from this. The same blue. Oh, see, but now I don't have that funny flip. It gives it enough weight to get rid of the funny flip. I do. I think these are gorgeous. I love the way she layers the text. Okay. This one needs a better torn edge. Again, no measurements, just eyeballs. But for some of you who want to do the measurements, you'll have to practice and figure that out or just glue the whole thing. It's fine. Two glue sticks, you'll make it through this whole project and won't worry about it. It's funny, this morning I was grumpy because I have a whole bunch of things I need to get done. And I was thinking, oh, I just don't have time to do this crafting today. But I have to tell you, I forgot how much I love this kind of playtime. Just get to play and do whatever I feel like doing. But I didn't do a good job of following. 
drawing the line on this one. Need to be fine. Okay. Okay, I like it that way better. <laughs> it is important to have playtime. You have to book it in. You absolutely have to book it in. Oh, I almost glued this. <laughs> it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. It would have all worked out. Order. Order. Sometimes I burnish. Burnish just means to create a good little seal between. I burnish with my lid on the glue stick. And I have to tell you, I actually prefer that over my bone folder. I was just chatting with someone about that and it's kind of funny. Um, not just because it's convenient, but because I just, I think it's easier in the holding part. And don't be afraid to use your scraps in your art, too. Like, we have a lot of fabulous scraps over here. This is definitely not a scrap-free project, though. Oh, look. It's all wobbly now. Is this the last one? All right, we have this one done. We have that one done. Yep, this is the last one. I think this is the one we wanted on our front cover, too, so we'll save her. I love them all, though. All right. I think I want to do it this way. <laughs> Definitely no way to call that work. Oh, my gosh. It is way too much fun. I haven't even made a snippet roll yet. That's on my to-do list. It sounds like a blast, though. I love clusters, so knowing me, I'll probably end up clustering my snippet roll. I don't know if I made that tall enough on the glue. We'll see. Oh, well, maybe I did. So every time I see a hunk of glue, I start singing hunk a hunk of burning love. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you guys get that same thing when you're crafting and you have songs that pop in your head just because? Or am I the only one that has that happen? I feel like it can't be that I'm the only one. See, there's no mistakes. I was a little off. It's fine. Oh, I seriously just finished that. No? I have one left over, so I couldn't have just finished that. Oh, here it is. Here it is. It's this side. Like, it's not making sense. And how do we want this in here? I do like it like this. Yeah. I'll lose a little bit of the lady's face. Yep. Can it turn into a rabbit pit? <laughs> oh, it's too good. 
too funny. Okay, define what rabbit pit means. Oh. I love the whole stitch thing. I think a snippet roll with a future stitch kit too would be cute. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but when I send out the happy packs, even though it's 69 happy packs every month, 50 of the people only receive a happy pack twice a year. So I could probably do something like the snippet, uh, not the snippet, but the stitch kit again for them. All right, so for those of you who need it straight, don't be afraid to go in and cut whatever you feel like you need to cut. Like right here, I see a little bit of white, so I'm just gonna trim the thing. I don't mind that this one's a little lower. This one still looks pretty good to me here. I'll flip a page, see if I still feel the same way. Yep. Flip a page, see if I still feel it. Yep. 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 All right, that's all. Oh my gosh, look, I attached one. There we go. Now that's all good. I even like how this is shorter than that one. Now it's time to stitch. Now let me get the gluey stuff off. I'm going to show you really quick. This is the easiest stitch. And the whole reason you even have a push pin. <laughs> That's what you mean. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so you've got your little angle like this. Okay. You have your push pen and you want to make sure when you grab this that you're careful because some people it's a little tougher. Oh, you know what I don't have sitting next to me, which I'll get one right now, but inside of your kits, you're going to have needle and thread. Let me go get a needle real quick. Here. Okay, I have this prepared for a future month, but I'll go ahead and include them in this month because some of you might need a bigger eye needle for the projects. So this will be in the kit. Um, and let me get some thread real quick. I found my scissors that are supposed to be on the desk. You guys are going to have different thread, but you'll have more than enough. So I just have some thread right here. Your thread will be prettier. And you want to find your, your fold, okay? You have it all folded together. Make sure it's all nice and level. Tamp it down. Some of you may have a paper clip around. Maybe I include paper clips. Oh, I can't because I just use all my paper clips. Dagnab it, just use your fingers. Okay, you've got your folds right there. Well, a hole in the middle with your push pen. Okay, you put a little hole higher in the fold. Like here's my fold right here. You put a little hole higher and then you put a little low and you look at the space you have between these two holes and you put one lower too. Okay. You fold it again. You ask yourself, did I put it on the folds? And the answer for me is no. So I'll do it again. Oh my goodness. So I'm just going to fold it and push it through that way. Worst teacher ever. That's why I don't do tutorials. Okay, so I have the hole here. Find a little spot. Have the hole here. Make sure I'm square. Find a little spot. 
Where did that all go? I lost it. Oh, there it is. And I have the little hole here. If it messes up, who cares? It'll be fine. It's just for play, right? Remember? All right, let's thread our needle. Done. And now the hole, you're going to go in the middle hole. Through the top hole. Go back into the top hole there. You're stitching your first booklet. Now you go back into the middle hole. Now you want to watch your thread because sometimes you poke your needle through your thread and that sucks. So you started going from the inside of your book into the middle hole, from the outside of your book into the top hole. And now you're on the inside again. So you want to go into the middle hole. Watch your finger underneath. Make sure you don't hit the thread too. And then you pull that one through. You can tighten it all up in a minute. Don't stress about it being all tight. Okay. Then from the back side, you go to the bottom hole. Find your little hole. Sometimes you're working your way through. It's like, okay, I know where that hole is. Where's this hole? What did I do with that hole? There it is. What I do with this hole? And it's okay to do it this way too. There it is. This hole right there. There it is. So now I have these two pieces. Now for me personally, I like to go through, you don't have to, but I like to go through the one up top because I like it to be all nice and snug. So this is when I'll go and I'll pull my thread. Be careful because you don't want to rip your paper because we're just dealing with paper here. And it's all nice and snug now. And then I go underneath the loop up top. That leaves me with this loop right here. And I just go through the loop with my thread and pull it down. Okay, and I do it twice. One, two, to go through it. That is not as snug as I would like, but it's perfectly fine. Then what I normally do, we'll just tie it. Now you'll see I have extra thread. I'm not gonna stress about that. Over, under, under, over for a nice square knot. And then I have my extra thread. Now on my extra thread, there's a couple different things you could do. You could just not care that you have extra thread or You trim it off to be exactly the length you want it to be. And you remember you have all these scraps over here, right? You can take and make yourself a little scrap. however you want to on whatever you want to like for instance I could choose to just do this flower and I'll fussy cut the flower again after I fold it because I don't want to see the white stuff okay you guys, there's lots of ways to do it. I could have cut the flower out of both sides like this. Which I might do. Because I wasn't liking how that was looking. And then glue each side. Now this is where wet glue is a little bit nicer, um, but this will be just fine. And now some of you like to have it to be 
where it's inside your book. And some of you like to have it dangling outside of your book. In my case today, I'm going to dangle it outside of my book. What I do with my little magazine page. Here it is. Enjoy your lunch date. Have fun. And, and enjoy finishing your snippet roll. That should be a blast. Okay, I'm just going to put it in the middle of my flower. Oops. I'm not the wise one that came up with this idea. I've seen other people do this. I don't know who did it first. I like to put glue on both sides. Your string is trapped in there. You can choose to cut it again afterwards if you want to instead of before. But now I have a fun little bit right there. This one, I'll choose to do it Midori style and just put a little knot down at the bottom. Just to give it that nice smooth finish. And that's it. And that just tells me where the middle is. My cute little book. Now, I'm going to just keep arting for a while because there's a lot to do. Right? So now I have this book. Let me do a quick share. With the pockets in each one. A place to journal if you so choose, or even, I don't know if you can see this, but one of the beautiful things about the thinner paper is you could actually practice tracing her face as you see it when you flip through. So that one is done. And let's go to, what was I doing next? Hold your britches, I gotta remember. Oh, I know what I was doing next. Let me make sure I don't lose my pen. I'll put that in my little cork board. I'm going to set my clipboard over here so it's nice and safe. Now, these are your tea cards. And now, one thing that's kind of nice with your tea cards is that you can actually use them to fill your book. Just put two tea cards per page, and suddenly you have pretty little stuff to put in your book. And I am just... And to cut them out. By hand. For those of you with paper trimmers, Julio. You, know, you can do them with your paper trimmers. I'm trying to do it like a hardest wood or more like a happy packer wood. I'm working with just scissors. The animals don't necessarily match the boho feel. I just fell in love with her tea card pack and thought it was fun. And thought how cute to make a little project with these. And what would I do with them? Okay, now I'm just gonna cut on the inside of every black line, actually. Yeah. 
at the long one first. already oh my gosh do you know what i want to do now Ooh, let's do this one different i have an idea okay let's cut this one off because i already started to see and this is why i love crafting okay so if i take this one I'm going to create a miniature book. You already saw how to do one book, so let's create several miniature books out of these. We'll cut the black lines off. And all I'm left with is these two. And look, it's a book. So I'm going to fold it on one side of the black line. And then I'm going to fold it on the other side of the black line. That's the hard part. We'll get the hard part done, don't worry. <laughs> oh, there we go, other side of the black line. And try to keep my lines straight. Again, the hard part. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to smooth it with the back of my scissors. You can smooth it with whatever you want. But it is nice to have these smooth when you're going to be making a booklet like this one. So we're going to make a tiny little booklet here. And my needle might be a little big for this. It'll still be okay. So this one, what we're going to do is... Stitch it as two pages. Dropping my papers, maybe? Okay, I think I'm going to glue these together. So it becomes a stiffer cover. And yes, this is cardstock. The thicker paper. So if I have it here, I'm going to stitch it together. Oh, and I'm not kidding either. I actually mean stitch it together. You guys have lots of thread in this month's kit. Let's just stitch the whole thing and not use glue. So where's my needle? Oh, that's right. I put it up here. I have this piece left. Let's see if this works. So I can trim it when I'm done. I'm gonna poke a hole in the middle with my push pin. Poke a hole. Let me see. If I can make a pattern here. So I have a hole in the middle here. And we'll do a hole up top there. A hole on the bottom there. And then we're going to just stitch it. So let's stitch this part first. And I'm going to start at the bottom because I feel like it. No. I must start at the top because I feel like it. So I'm going to go from the inside on the top, leaving a little tail. Then I'm going to go down the middle piece from the outside. This is 
watch your fingers when you're poking stuff through to the inside. You're not going to tie it off in the same way because we're going to stitch around this booklet. Now, something I didn't think to do was put pages in there, which I could have done. So we can do that if we want to right now. And I think I will. So just pull the thread out. Let's get some pages. Poke this baby in. I don't want the pages to be that thick. Maybe these ones. Now, this is a good sample for me to know how big to cut it. So I can put a little mark here. Oops, <laughs> I can put a little mark here at the bottom of this one I cut, and here, and I can use this if you don't have a ruler, a little cut thing. Better before you cut the paper, obviously. I already did, so it is what it is. I'm going to cut just inside my line so I don't see my line. Now I have a white top to this one. So I might make my pages a little bit smaller than the book itself. And that's okay. And then these are gonna be my pages. See about the width I need them to be. So I need it to be less than that, and I'm just going to use this as a guide. What did I do? I just all I did was just fold it backwards and made sure it was narrower than this little box. Now I'm going to fold it back on itself. We'll see why in a minute. And the same thing here. Just going to fold it back on itself. And the same thing here. It doesn't mean you have to use the kit exactly like I use it, but you can see the fold now. All I did was I folded it in half where the colorful side is out. And then I folded this back to be shorter than the width of this. If you wanna know how wide you want your folds to be, for those of you who need to know, about one and three quarter inches wide, a smidgen more. Okay, but now you wanna know how they're going in here. I'm looking at it, asking myself the same thing. I know I want you in here. Do you know I like this? So I think I'm gonna put you in here like that. Okay, so what does that even mean? So I changed the fold. I'm going to take this page, which is 11 inches by eight in front by Oh, it's a little bit more by a little more than three inches, a smidgen more than three inches. Okay. And that's because I guided it by the length of this book. 
then it's folded in half. This part right here is folded at two and three quarters. So if you score it at two and three quarters, and you fold it in, and you want it to be a little bit smaller because I got lucky. These are folded a little bit smaller so it actually folds in nice. I will tell you exactly where to score it at. Two and three quarters, then the next one, the next fold is also two and three quarters. And then this one is just under three inches, okay? So to that, you wanna fold at two and three quarters, two and three quarters. The middle fold ends up being just under three inches. That's the same there, and then two and three quarters. So it goes, fits nicely in there without having the cluster. Just, you know, just fold it how you want to fold it when you make your book. It's just, this is how I choose to do mine. Okay. Before I stitch it in, I want to glue this page. And I lost my glue stick. This happens to me all the time, I guess. To make a pocket. So I'm just going to glue that first fold right here. See the long fold right there. I'm just going to glue that first fold to the edge. Why? Because this is now a secret pocket. If you want to show people that it's a pocket, you can just carve out a little notch. Let me put that glue back there so it's clear. It's a pocket. When that's fully dry, it's better. Don't try to use your pocket until it's fully dry. And I'll do the same on this side. I'll cut out a little notch on the edge. And do the same here. Now these fold in. And there's journaling space on this page for the people to write on if they want to. The key is that you're making yourself another book. So let's find our hole. We have one already on this side. We can do this. Watch your fingers when you're poking the holes through. That's the hardest part. Same thing. Oh, that's really high up top. It's really low down bottom. So I might put them closer together. Again, fingers, people, fingers. This is why demonstrating it is harder. If I'm doing it by myself and I'm not demonstrating it, this is how I do it. I put it on a safe surface. I lay everything square. I make sure it's all down, and then I choose where I want to poke my holes, like this. So I never have my fingers in the way. So now I know I'm going to need a long piece of thread. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a long piece of thread. And stitch it all together. So I'm going to start at the top like we were before, except I might miss the pages. Yeah, that's okay. Then I'm going to come down. This is the top. And I want this to be long enough. It's actually the bookmark. So I'm going to go ahead and tie the top right now. 
because I feel like it. And it doesn't matter that this fell out. You're going to stitch it in with the next stitches. Normally, you wouldn't tie the top like this on a big book or something like that. But a lot of different ways to tie it. This is not necessarily the best way. It's just the way I'm doing it. <laughs> just how it goes. Oh, look, I didn't make it long enough. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. It's just going to dangle then, and maybe I'll put a charm on the end later. Okay, these two are now stitched together. And I'm going to grab my pages, go through the top hole of the pages. Make sure it's right side up if you care about that. And you have the same hole in your book. So you want to go through that top hole in your book. It's the only time you'll really be able to have them separate like this. And you want to go into the middle hole of your book, and you can see my holes in the book and on the pages, and you're going into the middle hole on your pages. You don't have to have it all tight yet, but you will soon. I'm going to start to pull it, so now it's tighter. I'm going to go through the bottom hole on the pages. And the bottom hole on the book. And yes, my needle is bigger, just like yours will be, than the initial hole that you poke. with the push pen, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. It at least gives you a starting point. Okay, so these are stitched. I'm gonna tug on this a little. I'm just pulling straight down. Now I'm gonna come back into the bottom hole here. Wherever that is on the book, there it is. Bottom hole. And if you have a bottom hole on your pages, now your book's going to be all lined up. You can see that they're loose, and I'm trying to tighten it right now. You can pull from the back side right there. And so you can see it's a stitch there and a stitch here. And if you want to, you can glue these shut or you can leave them open. Right there. So it's part of your book. I was going to stitch them shut, but now I'm kind of liking them open. And I will put a dangle on this. I haven't decided what yet. So now if that's the case, then I'm going to come back and go all the way to the top. So I'm going to come from that bottom hole. Back to this hole right here. The one just below the middle hole. You guys can stitch it however you want to stitch it. You don't have to stitch it the way I do. Then on the back side, it's naked right here and has a stitch right there. I'm going to go through that middle hole on the back side. See how it's naked right here and there's a stitch right there? So I'm going to go back to the top one in the pamphlet. And pull that through. 
and it'll look like it's stitched on both sides. The way that works is if you have an odd number of holes. Let me come back through here. On the back side, because there's no stitch on that back side, even though you see the black line from the cut lines. And now, even if you messed up on this first one for the tie, it doesn't matter if it's not long enough because now you can make yourself another book. So I'm going to go underneath right here. Create a knot. And then I might actually just make them both the same size because that's what I feel like right now. And you can do it however you feel. That's the beauty. It's your book. And then I'm notorious for too many knots. Again, I'm not a tutorial. I'm an inspiration. There's a very big difference. So there you go. Now it looks like my little book has antennas. You almost want to make it a butterfly, right? But when these dry, you have two little pockets to hide a little note inside here. This flips out, you can write on that. And when you flip your book, it looks like this, you have a little fox. It's blank, you can decorate it however you want. And you have your little fox. It's, it's blank, there's a pocket. It flips out like that. This one also flips out, you know, like when magazines have the flip outs. There's a pocket on this side. Blank on that side, and you have your fox, and then two blanks. It's kind of fun. And then we have antennas dangling out the top part to do whatever it is you want to do, and you can dangle charms on those if you want to. I didn't include charms in there, but I'm thinking that you guys have a lot of fabric fun that's in the kit, which I don't have for myself, so you guys can use your fabric to add your charms to and tie on some of that. Okay, that part's done. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut off two and I'm going to cut off these two. Okay, so I'm going to cut on this line. So this is the one with the two owls right here and the one owl right there. Hold the dowels like this. Actually, let's fold it. There's a black fold line right there, but I also want to fold it on this line. Why? Because, do I have any staples in my stapler? Ah, oh, I don't have any staples in my stapler. Yeah, I can have it. That's okay. You can stitch it. I want to create a little flip like this. Seems like that's a little too long. So I might have to bend it again. Okay, so you won't have to bend it again. Just fold it twice past your little line right there. Okay, there we go. And this will tuck down nicely, right there. Yeah. Or if you don't want to bend it at all, you could have folded it at that smooth line past the black line. Okay, that's good. So now, let's see how long this is. And it'll be different for whatever pages you choose. But the size I need my paper to be is just over three inches. And so, let me see where I'm at here. Oh, look, I could even be shorter than that if I want to be. Because I'm under six inches there. And we know this is 11. So that math won't work. 
Oh, I don't think I've ever seen it done this way. So let me try something new. So let me score this every three inches. Okay, so. Here's a three, here's a six, here's a nine, and then there's a little dilly wad left over. So here's a three, here's a six, here's a nine, and that's left over. So I will do the folds on the lines just to get started. My folds are never straight, so you guys don't have to worry about that. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine. You guys do your own thing. I just pinch it at my lines and then go to it. Okay. Pinch it again at my lines. And I'm designing as I go, guys. All I know is that I need it to be three inches tall. There we go. Okay. Why three inches tall? Because then that's how it fits in here. That's why I said three inches tall. See, it fits. So now, I need to make it fun. So. If I take this and put, I'm putting it where I'm eyeballing it to be about the middle, okay? And then I wanna put a little line inside of it. Do that again. I put it where I just eyeballed it to the middle. And then I put two little lines where it goes inside of my lines outside. So if I was to actually draw the line on the edge, it would be here, but I pulled it in just a little bit. Okay. Let's see if it even focuses on that line. It's inside just a little bit. So what I want to do here is fold it. Do here, just fold it. Okay. So now This will totally work. So I am going to cut to the fold. And I am making it up as I go, you guys. Cutting to the fold. Cutting to the fold, flipping it over. Cutting to the fold. And then, of course, here, I have to open this up and cut to the fold, too. Now, let me see if this actually does what I'm hoping it does. Okay. So first off, this is the extra piece. We'll worry about that first. So then I can have these fold in, and these fold in, these fold in, and these wrap around. Let's see how this looks when I put it together. We'll see. So 
if I glued this down, this would flip out. This would flip down. This would flip out and out. I think I like the idea of blowing it here and here first. Yep, that's what's going to happen. All right, design it on the go. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. So I like the way this looks, and I like the way this is long ways. So I am going to take this long piece of paper, which is 11 inches by five and a quarter. It's scored at, well, it's not precise by any means. Hold your bridges, let me see where that is. Close enough. It's scored at one and three quarters. And again, at three and three quarters, okay? So it's 11 inches by five and a quarter. And it's scored at one and three quarters, and then again at three and three quarters, or two inches later. And I am going to glue it, not where the extra flap is, because you'll notice there's an extra flap here. I'm going to glue it down. So let me just... Dirty up this glue. Now what I don't want to do is glue past this line down here, which I kind of did just now and I didn't want to. So I will wipe some of that glue off. Don't just make it. Okay. No, I didn't do too bad. Okay, now the goal, keeping the smaller flip, you know, the one that's smaller than the other widths, and the widths being three inches. And so make sure that your fold doesn't go past your little line when you do it. So see how my fold is past the little line? I don't want that. Once your fold right there in the middle, and it runs down. This would be a lot of fun if you gave yourself a journaling spot on each one of these as it flipped down. Okay, it folds down. Folds down again, and now it's nice and wide inside there, and you've got yourself a cute little matchbook with funky folds. So I open it up. You can write a little note here. You can write a little, like I'm going to write a little number. I've got a little journaling spot there. It flips out. I have a journaling spot there. That's two. That's three. 
That's four. That's five. There's a spot right here, which is six. If I flip this up, that's seven. Flip that out. That's eight. And that's nine. This one's 10. A little note here, that's 11. Here's 12. You've got 13, 14, and 15. Don't forget this one is 16. This opens. That's 17, 18, 19, and 20. This would be really, really fun if instead of doing it with this piece of paper where it has all the print on it, you actually did it on the white side because you could leave 20 notes. And I actually think I didn't count some because I've got, there you go, 21 is right there. 21 is hidden. And they're all counted. And frankly, 22 is hidden right there. So there's 22 little spots to write on in here. And it would be the cutest little card to give to somebody to say 22 ways I love you or happy 22nd birthday. It all folds back down into a little wise thing. Now, for those of you who are silly, you know, you can make a lot of wise comments about it. <laughs> and, and, you know, try to fold up that bottom to keep it nice and tucked and you can put it wherever you want. And the backside's sideways, so that's fine. Okay, here's another one. So I want to, and I'll show you with my push pen real quick. I want to cut a hole from where the push pen is now where the push pin is now okay so that's what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna fold it halfway it's my halfway i'm not going to worry about where the black lines are i'm just going to fold it halfway then i'm going to cut from the fold to where i showed you on the push pin so i'm going to cut from the fold to that first line, not all the way through, just the first line. Then I'm gonna fold it down. Oh, and wish my owls were upside down, but watch this, I'm gonna fold it like this, okay? But that means I need to fold these edges first. So let's fold these edges in. And you want to fold it to the fold, not past the fold. Otherwise, it'll get messy on you. When I say to the fold, I mean this fold right here. So you want to fold it almost to this middle line fold. Not quite. And now if your owls were upside down, you would see, as you open this up like this, you have the shape like that. You can set it on your tabletop like this if you stitched or glued the bottom corners. But you'd have owls upside down if you did it that way. You can also make your book like this. Again, if you do it like that, you're gonna have some of your owls upside down. But I just wanted to show you that's a way you can actually fold and do your books. And it's like a never ending book too. The downside is these owls would be upside down. So that's the downside. If you wanted to do it with your white paper, you could do the same thing, but it was easiest to demonstrate it to you because for your sewing instructions, you can set up your sewing instructions that way. And it shows it to you in the right order with nothing upside down. And that's how you do it without cutting all the way through. And that's why you can't cut all the way through so it holds it together for you. Okay, so now that's what I use that to demonstrate for, but what you can do with all your leftover pieces 
is make them into tags. When I say like tags, you can use this as your guide if you want to for your corners. You know, and just trace around here and trace that if you want to. You can use this to make your rounded corners for a tag if you want to round your corners. And just take this, watch your rounded corners, and just draw a little line where your rounded corner would be. Tracing that outline without my glasses on is a challenge. And just trim that rounded corner with your scissors. And then to get your hole, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can start it though with your push pen. You can finish it with your needle, because your needle's wide enough to get it going. And then you have all kinds of funny threads and fancy threads to make all these tags. And you can write little positive affirmations to yourself on the back of the tags. So on the back, you can decoratively go, I am worth it. And give yourself whatever message you want to remind yourself on a regular basis on the back side of your tags. And I encourage you to do that with all nine of your remaining tags left if you did it along with me. Now, the last thing that I have sitting here is this matchbook. And you're saying, well, that's not a craft. It just held your stuff, right? To me, everything is a craft. So let's set this aside, put our little push pen in there so it's safe. I so wish the needle would fit in there, but it doesn't. So I'll have to figure something else out with that. And we have extra papers. So what do I want? That one kind of fits. This one's a little bit too wide, but it's so darn cute. This one's about perfect. It's just a little bit too wide. And so I can measure it this way. So I start here. Like this, like this, like this. I'll have extra. Okay, so on this one, on your matchbook, if you cut where this line is on the paper, look this, assume this is right side up and you have that beautiful lady's face right there. So cut in between the one and the two on 12, like you're gonna cut out your lady. And cut on the line right here as if you were coming up to the lady. And I'm going to trim off the white space carefully. We all know I can't cut a straight line, but hey, I can try. And trim off the white space here too, even though that really doesn't matter. And now the matchbook that can hold all your sewing needles that you just received or receiving in the package. Now, instead of looking like a matchbox, it can look cute because you can wrap it around here and suddenly your matchbox is cute. Okay, so let's see which way I want to see. What do I, oh, it all looks good to me. So I think I will start it this way. And all I'm gonna do is take my handy dandy little glue thingy and glue this baby about as much as I can. Get that extra glue there. Get your edges down too. And set it over to dry because you don't want to tinker with that for a little while. There is no right or wrong on how you choose to craft. Just always remember that. Now, I don't want to start it right on the edge. Simply because I don't want the edge to like kick up or something. 
just wrapping it around as I go. And then on the bottom part, I want to do just a double check because that's where it's going to seal the best, right? So on the bottom part, I'm just going to make sure that it's a really good edge and roll it around. And bam, you have a cuter matchbook. Store your fun stuff. Even though this doesn't save, <laughs> it's just going to have to come up with something there. Um, that's fine. And once it's dry, you can put this inside and it shouldn't matter. Okay, see, still fits inside. In fact, for me personally, it's a little bit of a tighter fit, which is better. So. Okay, but I'm gonna take it out so it can dry, just in case. Now, some of you might have a little bit of an edge, extra edge. If that bothers you, trim it off. For me personally, it doesn't bother me. It'll be fine. So I'll let that dry and we'll move on to the next bit. And look at this. I barely have anything left. So that means that I get to play with all my remaining bits on this cannabis board. I'm going to take the ugly side, actually. And you guys will, it'll be obvious what size side you use on your canvas board. And if you have paints, go ahead and paint it. If not, then choose the pieces you want to put on here. And so for me, I'm going to take each one of these out. By ripping except for this one. I'm going to save this one. Okay, and so the rest of it I'm going to rip. And we'll start with this lady. And I personally like things ripped with the ripped side up. You guys choose how you want to do your own collage. Oops. And I'm using just the supplies in the package. But you all have to know by now that you are not limited to just the supplies in the package. You know what, I think I might cut out this circle too, just because I don't like how that tore. Look, there's a stamp on here too. And so because I can't cut perfectly straight, I'm gonna wiggle it as I take out the circle. And yes, I'm saying wiggle it just a little bit. And this will probably be another one of my top pieces. Doesn't mean it's the focal point, it just means it's one of my top pieces. And this lady will get ripped out. And now I'm just going to go wild with my ripping, I think. And just lay them on. And, you know, I think I'm going to cut this piece out too.
I don't know if I want them together or not. I just know that that's what I'm inclined to do right now. Yeah, I might leave them together. Enough with the squares. You don't have to rip it the way I rip it. You rip it the what draws you in, what you want to do. Shoot, you don't even have to rip it. make this a pocket board. That would be kind of cute. But I love pockets. Oh, well, you know what I should have done? I should have just kept that square. Let's do that. Let's keep it square. I'll show you why in a minute. Because I'm going to cut it from point to point. And again, from point to point. Be my corners. Oh my gosh, I can't cut a straight line to save my booty. But... Okay, let me figure it out. I can try. There we go. Close enough. And here, cut that off a little bit. Get my corners in. If I do it this way, it will help. There we go. Corner, corner, and corner, corner. All right, we'll start with that. Then I'll just keep going. And when you're done gluing these all on, um, you're going to realize how much glue you go through, or maybe I just go through more glue than most people, but um, then you can doodle on it and totally make it your own. Today, I'm not going to doodle on it because I'm already running out of time. I've got a whole bunch of other things I need to go do. Um, after I do this, I have to create the little stickers to put on the bag so they know where to go to even see the different ideas of what they can do in the kits, not including the things that are in the stitch part of the kits. And here. Get the front down, part down real good. On your canvas, you do not even have to use paper on your canvas if you don't want to.
And don't be afraid to glue over the paper when you're done too. You know what? I'm not in the mood for straight, so let's put her a little crooked. Where's she going? She's going right about there, I think. Here. Let's put this one on an edge because it's nice and straight. What is my goal when I'm laying it down is to just relax. That's my goal. I don't actually have big audacious goals when I'm crafting on things. This is when I get quiet. Probably where you guys could just fast forward me. <laughs> oh, but you know, I might as well just leave it on. You guys can just see it in real time, start to finish. And yes, it dries. It dries clear. At the end, I'll just put glue over the whole top of the whole thing, too. semester colors going no, no, you do it how you do it is how you choose to do it can you imagine what it must have been like for the first impressionist to ever do something i'm sure lots of people don't know that's not how you paint nobody wants that you know what i mean let's get a straight line going right here for this edge almost all of our edges will have a nice straight line Ooh, i think all of them will that's good I'm getting to the bottom of this one. Yeah, there it goes. And this is why two glue sticks in every pack. <laughs> or maybe it's just me, but yeah. It does feel like it needs to be. And this one has like a little strip right here. Any good strips? There's a good strip.
Okay. And this now I'm going to start thinking about where everything goes. So I think this one goes here. This one, I know I've been practicing for this one to go here for a while, but I need a little something there. So she's going to go there. Now this one has room. Oh, she goes over the face. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, that's not happening. So. I'm feeling like this is just, the circle is gone. I don't want to go over her face. That's much better. Uh-oh. Might have a problem. Hold your britches. So I'm this my glue sticks weren't brand new, like the glue sticks I'm sending. So I'm going to have to uh, do a different method. Hold your bridges. So for those of you with Elmer's glue or wet glue, you can totally use that. All different kinds of glue. It's just I'm using what I have. You just can't see it anymore. The reason I leave the white edges sometimes is so you can delineate between them. Right, that one's good. Put my matchbook cover on here actually use it for a purpose so I can toss stuff in here and store it but I don't feel like it I'm all done with my ripped papers I guess she's here I'm gonna bring her all the way to the edge
And I'm about done. So for all of you who are crafting, don't forget that that slow stitch is even going to be something that you can choose to play with a lot and will take you a lot of time to enjoy and you can take it with you wherever you go. Um, when we say slow stitch, it's, you know, it's hand embroidery, stuff like that. So, and it's a skill that you might absolutely enjoy later on down. You know, it's something that you can take with you. We're going to a procedure and it doesn't take up a lot of space. And for some people who are in and out of hospitals, it might be kind of fun to do that. And you're totally free. It's your own creation. It does not have to look like stuff you've seen in the past. It's however you want it to look. That's why we gave you just whatever the stitches are that other people use as a guide to get started. So with that, let me share with you the various things we made today out of this package. And that doesn't even begin to include the slow stitch. So we have our pretty matchbook cover. You could even actually make it a drawer if you want to. Wouldn't that be cute? Can you imagine if we poked a little hole in here? Made it a drawer with a bead. Oh my gosh, that would be so cute. Yeah, go ahead and do that. There it is. Here's your drawer. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so you have your little matchbooks cover. You learned how to do the fold like this, but remember half of it has to be upside down for that to work. So this one's right side up and this side would have to be upside down for this project to show as a cover like this. But on these ones, you can definitely turn all eight of these owls into tags like this. And then you have nine tags where you inspire yourself. In addition, created a funky fold. And so in this matchbook, it's a whole experience where you have 22 possibilities of writing a little note or inspiration or a little bit of fun. And yes, I don't have all the perfect measurements, but just know that even if you wanted to, you could just glue the first part of the paper down and then do all your cuts. However you choose to do it, this is what play is all about. You don't have to make it like I did. It's just, it was fun for me to make it like this. And so it opens in all these ways. You don't even have to open them all together at once. I actually like this one better like that. And that one is done. Oh, look, I didn't even notice. We have all these, which if you wanted to, um, you have these three right here. You can fold these. I forgot we had these. These can be more tags or you know, that little book you made. You can add to your little book this one. So all you have to do to add to your book is glue this in and then this can fold out. Like this. And then if you want to, you can hang this on a tree as a decoration or something. And so just glue this page to this page and it pulls out here. You can write little notes on that. And then it flips. You have two pockets. It'll flip out on this one. There's this book. And I might as well just do it now. That's how this one's going to be. Oops. Sitting there going, why isn't the glue stick coming up? Because I'm not used to working with white. So glue this down. Glue 
isang And that's a funky book. Now it does need to have some kind of a closure to it. So let me see if I have anything the right length. That's too small. Too small by a smidgen. This one's a little bit longer. So ugly, just the tip of this scrap. You guys, you can make your closure however you want to. Just make sure it's not so tight that it won't come off, slide off. So my closure looks like this. It'll slide on and out. That's it. Make sure my book is closed. Slide it back on and bam, I have a little closure. It's only glued right at the tip there. So if I decide to put another closure on it, that's fine too. And is that it? Is that all we did? And it took me that long to do that much? Holy smacks. All right, well, with that said, I did leave one thing undone. That's the little tag. And all I want to do on this little tag right here is glue one tiny little thing on it. And I'll wrap it around both sides. That's why I'm gluing the whole piece. And I'm going to write You are the other side loved. So there's a whole boatload of things that you guys can do. It doesn't have to be how I made these things. I would love to see pictures of how you make things. With that said, hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of playtime today. And um, I do feel like I'm forgetting something, but I guess not. Oh, I'm forgetting that book. Where did that book go? The book we stitched. Oh, well. We, we have a book that we stitched as well that's not on my desk. But with that said, oh, love and hugs, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.